Welcome back to another day in Belgium. Today, we have hopefully escaped the busy central historic district of Brussels, and instead we're on the outskirts. This is mini Europe, and it's right next to the Atomium, and we're gonna spend today exploring both of them and seeing what they have to offer. Are they worth a day trip? Let's go find out. This sort of feels like a this is your life <laughs> theme park for us because many of these miniatures actually look familiar to us. These are places that we've been. And it's kind of a trip to see all of them. Uh, starting with some of our Scandinavian countries, which are some of our favorites. We have uh, Denmark behind me and we have Sweden right in front of me. This is really kind of neat. It's fun to go down memory lane. And this is Finland, which is a country that we actually have not been to, but I kind of feel like we have because Minnesota was founded by a significant number of immigrants from Finland. Minnesota has a ton of saunas, especially in northern Minnesota where a lot of the Finns settled. Uh, apparently in Finland, there are more saunas owned by people than cars. So we might have to visit. The detail on these is absolutely amazing. They've even recreated the flower carpet that takes place in Grand Plants every other year. The detail here is pretty amazing. We wanted to go to Dinant on this trip, but we're not gonna make it, unfortunately. Next time. These replicas are all built to a 1 25th scale. Bill for scale. Look how big the Eiffel Tower still is. I have to admit, it's easier to see the detail in this Arc de Triomphe than the actual Arc de Triomphe because it's so big. What do you think of the Atomium so far? We're not at the Atomium yet. Yeah, I know, but you can see it. Uh, it's shiny. Doesn't look very big. love Porto, so this one might be our favorite. <laughs> Look at that. It's, they've got the detail down to the satellite dishes on the fronts of the houses. Isn't that amazing? And this here is the Guimarães Castle. Uh, if you haven't seen that video, check it out. It's so cool to see this castle that we were just at like seven months ago. When we were there, the drawbridge was closed. We were not able to cross it over to the main tower in the castle. <laughs> Venice, I know we were just there last year, but now I kind of want to go back. We love Venice so, so much. You know we had to do the cheesy pose. <laughs> This is El Escorial from Spain, which I think I went to back in college, but it might be time for a return visit. It's so impressive. I think I would appreciate it in a different way than I did back then. I mean, look how big it is. Wow. This is the bullring from Sevilla, and there are 6,000 individually hand-painted figurines attending a bullfight. We saw this thing on fire while we were eating lunch and we were a little bit alarmed. <laughs> I think they're gonna need more than those little uh, pea shooters. God, they're even putting it out from the boats. <laughs> 
Okay, we did not expect to see this here today. There's an actual piece of the Berlin Wall right here in mini Europe. <laughs> we have not been to Berlin, so this is the closest we've been. <laughs> That's really cool. I'm really excited about the next one. We've been looking at Berg Elt sort of from the whole park as we've been walking, and uh, we were here a long time ago, and it's a beautiful castle, and it's really neat to see it here. I think it might be time to go back to Germany too. Poland. been to Sessiony Baths uh, in Budapest and I had no idea that they were this big while we were there. It is so cool to see the reproductions of all these famous buildings all around Europe right here in one place. Upon further examination I'm kind of disappointed that there is no men playing chess in the pool like there was at the actual baths. <laughs> <laughs> we only spent one night in Zagreb before we went on to other places in Croatia, but we've always been meaning to go back. This could be an expensive park to visit. All we want to do is travel more now. The bridges of Ljubljana, we know these. You'll say Plisnik designed them. We have a whole video about Ljubljana. <laughs> if you want to check that out, click the link above. Excuse me! Austria is absolutely beautiful in Europe. The mountains... Ah! Oh so beautiful. Tower is frightfully close to Big Ben in London. <laughs> the same. And it looks like Greece is our final stop. We enjoyed Greece, but I have to say we enjoyed the Peloponnese way more than we enjoyed Athens. <laughs> it's a very well-fitting helmet, let me tell you. <laughs> I barely fit into all of these. <laughs> Thank you for that trip down memory lane. That was a little bit unexpected. We didn't think we'd be like revisiting every European place that we've been to over the years, uh, but it was kind of fun. That was a lot of fun. Level of detail, I just can't say enough. How much detail they put into these models, it's just amazing. Um, Countless hours. I love that they included the political demonstrations and that they would show both sides. Like for Brexit, they showed people who wanted to stay as part of the EU and people who wanted to Brexit. Yeah. It was really cool. Well, now we are pivoting and <laughs> we're headed up there. We're headed up to this thing. What is it? I don't know. We're going to go find out. <laughs> All right, so here's what we know about the Atonium so far. It is shaped like an atom, and it was built for the World Fair, sort of like how the Eiffel Tower was built for the World Fair in Paris. Brussels got a giant atom. I'm so curious to see the inside of this. You know, it's really impressive to go up the Eiffel Tower. Maybe this one will be equally impressive. bigger closer up. Yes, I have an atom growing out of my head. <laughs> it's really cool so far, although I see stairs. Boy, this better not be a bunch of stairs. Looks like there's a line.
was built for the 1958 World's Fair to acknowledge great scientific advances happening at the time. It was supposed to only be a temporary exhibit, but it was so popular they could not carry out its planned demise. The structure was not maintained and eventually deteriorated enough that major renovations were required. Instead of tearing it down, it was decided to undertake extensive and expensive work to restore and improve it. This work took nearly two years and cost 26 million euro. The Atomium was proudly reopened on February 2006 and is now the most visited attraction in Brussels. I think I was a little bit underwhelmed by the Atomium and I was impressed by Mini Europe. What did you think? Yeah, about the same. Atomium was really, really crowded. There was just a ton of people here, and it's, it's the thing to do. It's like the Eiffel Tower of Brussels. And yeah. So everybody comes here. I don't regret doing it. It's a fun diversion from historic Brussels. But now it's time for a break. It's over 90 degrees today, and uh, I think there might be some ice cream in our future. Catch you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Always.